today our topic is pulmonary tuberculosis so again this is a very favorite question some question of the examiners they very often ask these questions about the pulmonary tuberculosis the lab diagnosis of pulmonary tuberculosis and other questions regarding the pulmonary tuberculosis so how do they ask the questions they do not directly give the uh, uh, give the question that like uh, write the lab diagnosis of pulmonary tuberculosis rather they give a clinical scenario like they will give that a patient is coming to you uh, who is having a history of evening rise of temperature and uh, has having productive cough and with the cough there is hemoptysis okay so this is a typical history that you will get in case of tu tuberculosis uh, in the clinical scenario based questions or in the structured long questions so in that cases you have to diagnose it as a case of tuberculosis pul uh, pulmonary tuberculosis and then answer the the questions which are asked after that so you have to ask uh, answer the questions accordingly so uh, first thing what is the agent causing this pulmonary tuberculosis so the agent of the pulmonary tuberculosis is well known to everyone that is the mycobacterium tuberculosis so the agent is the mycobacterium tuberculosis now straight forward coming to the lab diagnosis of this tuberculosis or or, uh, or the mycobacterium tuberculosis so uh, in case of diagnosis in case of lab diagnosis of any conditions we have to first collect the specimen so the first aim we have is to collect the specimen so first heading we will give is of the specimen collection so uh, what do we do in a specimen collection we have to collect the specimen what type of specimen do we collect so we collect two sputum samples in case of in case of suspecting of pulmonary tuberculosis so if you are suspecting a case of pulmonary tuberculosis you have to take two sputum samples and out of those two sputum samples one sample will be the spot sample while the other sample will be the early morning sample okay so one will be the spot sample that is as the patient comes to you you take the sample then and there and the other sample is what you take on the uh, on the early morning next day so on the early morning next day you take the other sample so spot sample see here spot sample is collected at the time of presentation then and there when the patient presents to you and early morning sample is collected after washing the mouth so that the food particles cannot interfere with the staining procedure so early morning sample is collected uh, early morning next day after the day of presentation next is the procedure of collection so uh, this procedure of collection sometimes is asked in the viva so uh, you should know about this procedure of collection of a sputum sample so the procedure is that First, you have to ensure that there is a well ventilated room in which you are going to collect the sputum sample from a uh, suspected case of TB. So, patient then the patient is asked asked to take three to four deep breaths, and after that, cough out deep from the chest. So first, the patient will take three to four deep breaths. And after taking three to four deep breaths he will cough out deep from the chest and as a result uh, the sputum will come into his mouth his or her mouth and uh, after that he will be asked to spit the sputum in a wide mouthed screw capped container so this is in short the procedure of collection of the sputum how will you determine the quality of the sputum what type of uh, i mean how good quality the sputum has how will you determine so uh, for that if the specimen is having uh, is if the specimen is 
or the sputum is thick and viscous then you can say that the quality is good but if it is a watery specimen then quality is not good and you have to discard that specimen so if it is thick and viscous then keep it send it to laboratory if it is a watery specimen then discard it and try to take another sample from the patient so this is all about the specimen collection now coming to the next step which is performed in the laboratory so the next step that is performed in a laboratory is the digestion decontamination of the specimen so what does this digestion and decontamination mean so before doing the culture from the specimen what do we do we digest the specimen we digest the specimen basically the digestion here means the digestion of the pus cells which is present in the sputum so digestion means digestion of the pus cells and decontamination means the de uh, killing of the normal flora the commensals of the mouth so in digestion and decontamination of a specimen there is digestion of the pus cells and there is decontamination from the normal flora of the mouth which uh, may be present in the sputum so how do we do the digestion and decontamination for that we have two methods one is called as the petrox method in which we use 4% NaOH the other one is the NALC plus 2 NaOH method in which the NALC is the N-acetyl L-16 and plus 2% NaOH NaOH. So in the Petrops method where we use 4% of NaOH, the sputum is mixed simply with the 4% NaOH, we centrifuge it and it is neutralized with phosphate buffer saline. Okay. And then the sput the, the specimen is a specimen has got now the specimen has got digested and has become decontaminated. So this Petrov's method is a uh, Petrov method of digestion and decontamination is useful for LJ media. If, if you are going to uh, inoculate the specimen on the LJ media, Lovenstein Jensen media, then this Petrov's method is a better method for digestion and decontamination of the specimen. But if you are going to do automated culture system if you're going to uh, inoculate into the automated culture system then in that case this nal plus two percent naoh method is a better method of digestion and decontamination of specimen where we use the nal plus two a naoh two percent naoh that is the best method uh, what does that do that NaOH uh, the NALC plus NaOH that liquefies the sputum and that NaOH kills the normal flora thereby again the sputum the specimen gets liquefied and now it becomes very much favorable for inoculating into the automated culture systems okay so remember that for inoculating into the Lowenstein Jensen media, the Petrox method is a better method for digestion and decontamination on the sputum specimen. And for inoculation into the automated culture system, the N acetyl L16 plus 2% NaOH method is a better method. Now, so after that. After that, we do the we do direct microscopy with the specimen. We do one thing we do is the inoculation, and the other thing we do is the direct microscopy. So inoculation we will see later. First, we do the direct microscopy under the microscope by uh, staining the specimen or staining the smear with the Jill, Jill Nielsen technique, Jaden stain. Okay, so the process is specimen digested and decontaminated specimen is used to prepare the smears first we prepare a smear and we stain it with the jaden stain and after staining we examine this smear under oil immersion 100x magnification okay so there we can find two results either we will get a negative result 
or we will get a positive result so how can we define the negative result so we will uh, state that the specimen is negative for mycobacterium tuberculosis if the specimen if after examining 100 oil immersion fields there are no acid fast organisms found okay so if even after examining 100 oil immersion fields no acid fast organism is found then we will call it as a negative result okay then we'll call it as a negative result and we'll, we will call it as a positive result if the acid fast bacilli appear as red long slender and beaded bacilli this all these adjectives are very important for mycobacterium tuberculosis so we will regard as the we will call it as the smear as positive if the if first of all if acid fast bacilli are seen there second the acid fast bacilli are seen as red long slender and beaded these are the four adjectives of the mycobacterium tuberculosis you should remember so if the acid fast bacilli appears in the any any one of the oil immersion field then we will call it as a positive result so if the see here if the slender bacilli has a typical beaded appearance it is reported as we will not call it as a mycobacterium tuberculosis because we are not still confirmed that it is my to mycobacterium tuberculosis it may be some other acid fast bacilli as well so how we are going to report based on this direct microscopy we will report as the acid fast bacilli resembling mycobacterium tuberculosis not exactly mycobacterium tuberculosis mark the words resembling mycobacterium tuberculosis are seen by smear microscopy by Jaden stain by smear microscopy by Jaden stain and remember to make this table always because this will fetch you some better marks now what do we see in this uh, table is the classification or the grading of the smear so if there is no acid fast bacilli after examining 100 oil immersion fields we will we will call it as a negative finding or negative result grading is zero if you find one to nine acid fast bacilli per 100 oil immersion field after examining 100 oil immersion fields we will call it as scanty and the result we will call uh, as positive that the result is positive findings are positive that there is some acid fast bacilli if the finding is 10 to 99 acid fast bacilli per 100 oil immersion field after examining 100 oil immersion fields the grade is given 1 plus and the finding is positive if there is 1 to 10 acid fast bacilli per oil immersion fields remember till here till here it was per 100 oil immersion fields now it is 1 to 10 acid fast bacilli per oil immersion field per oil immersion field after examining 50 oil immersion fields then we will grade it as 2 plus and of course it will be a positive result if there is more than 10 acid fast bacilli per, per oil immersion field uh, after finding just 20 oil immersion fields then we will grade it as 3 plus and the result will of course be positive now after that Jaden stain method of uh, uh, staining of the acid fast bacilli we also have some other method like the Kenyon's cold acid fast staining where heating is not required just the phenol concentration in the carbal fusion is increased so you will understand it you will understand it once we know about the Jaden stain the steps of the Jaden stain and the chemicals that we use or the um, decolorizers and the modules what we use in case of the Jaden stain so once you know those things then you will be then you will understand this also 
what is the meaning of increasing the cons phenol concent uh, phenol concentration in the carbon fish in heating uh, in the steps but this is the basic difference between the jaden stain and the quinones cold acid fast staining that in the quinones heating is not required and phenol concentration in the carbon fish staining is increased these are two basic differences between the jaden stain and the quinones cold acid fast staining now comes the staining and now comes the culture so now we will culture the specimen on some specific culture media so first of all is the Lowenstein Jensen medium LJ media which is the very much specifically used for growth of the mycobacterium tuberculosis and the composition of the Lowenstein Jensen media can be remembered with the mnemonic of game with the mnemonic of game we have G4 malachite green this is the selective agent this is responsible for the growth of the mycobacterium tuberculosis on this media only i mean uh, the malachite green which is present in the lowest and jensen media is providing selectivity to the growth of the mycobacterium tuberculosis okay so this is the selective agent malachite green is a selective agent now a for asparagine m for mineral salt solution and e for egg of hen so these are the composition of the Lowenstein Jensen medium. How do we do? Uh, how do we inoculate over uh, the LG medium? So see here, the specimen is inoculated onto this medium, and then it is incubated for about six to eight weeks. Because why so much long time? Because Mycobacterium tuberculosis grows very slowly. So that's the reason we store uh, we inoculate it for six to eight weeks okay then we get the growth of mycobacterium tuberculosis how the uh, how is the uh, characteristic what is the characteristic of the uh, colony colonies of the mycobacterium tuberculosis on the lg media so the characteristic of the colony is rough tough and buff colored colonies so remember this the this is asked in viva as well that what is the colony characteristic of mycobacterium tuberculosis so it is rough tough and buff colored colonies while they will also ask you what is the uh, colony characteristic of mycobacterium bovis so then you have to say smooth moist and white colored colonies so this is the difference between the colony characteristic of the mycobacterium tuberculosis and mycobacterium bovis this is asked in viva as well Now that was the manual method of inoculating the uh, inoculating the specimen onto a um, uh, culture media and then getting the growth over that culture media over a long duration of time. Other than that, we have the Bactic uh, MGIT, MGIT Bactic MGIT, which is mycobacterial growth indicator tube. That is uh, so. This is an automated system and it takes about three to four weeks. And detects the growth as well as resistant to the anti-tubercular drugs so what is the significance or what is the importance of this Bactic Bactic MGIT over the Lowenstein Jensen media or the conventional methods of detection or um, uh, making the cultures of the mycobacterium tuberculosis so importance is that of course see here there we saw that the we had to uh, store it for about six to eight weeks for getting the growth of the mycobacterium tuberculosis here we need to store it only for three to four weeks and one more importance is that it is the auto automated system so uh, the chances of uh, you know uh, mistakes in case in this case are less and also it detects the resistance of in the mycobacterium tuberculosis against the anti tubercular drugs so it is important or it is uh, more giving more benefits uh, by bactic mgit than the conventional method of lowenstein jensen culture of culturing on the lowenstein jensen media then once we have cultured on the lowenstein jensen media if we have cultured on the automated system that is Bactic MGIT 
so that will give us the results uh, that will confirm the mycobacterium tuberculosis on its own we need not to do anything but if we are doing it on the LG media then we have to confirm the bacteria by doing some other tests as well okay so for that for that we have the uh, for that identification of the virus on the LG media uh, sorry identification of the mycobacterium tuberculosis on the LG media we have the acid fast staining so we will take a colony from the growth on the LG media and we will make a smear that we will stain with the acid fast staining otherwise known as the Jaden stain and then we will uh, look at the acid fast bacilli whether they are seen as long cylinder beaded appearance or not so if they appears like that then we can uh, we can be sure that it is it may be the mycobacterium tuberculosis then we will do the mpt64 antigen detection this is positive for mycobacterial tuberculosis complex and negative for non tuberculosis non tubercular mycobacteria so the tubercular mycobacteria are divided into i mean the mycobacteria are divided into the mycobacterium tuberculosis and the non tubercular mycobacteria that is a different group of uh, bacteria the non tubercular mycobacteria okay so here they are completely a negative for the mpt64 antigen but the mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, complex which includes the mycobacterium tuberculosis mycobacterium bovis they are positive for mpt64 antigen uh, other than that we have malitop that is the automated identification system where we put the sample or the uh, culture media into the mallet of and we get the the machine tells you the uh, identity of that bacteria okay then we have serology that is of no use nowadays that has been banned also next what we do is the molecular method so the molecular method the importance or usefulness of this molecular method is that they give faster results and they are more sensitive than culture and the drug resistance can be detected along with the identification of the bacteria so that's why the molecular methods become very useful the different molecular methods that we can use are the pcr okay the pcr the gene expert cbnet is what is uh, uh, called as the cartridge based nucleic acid amplification test so cbnet that is now the investigation of choice because this gives quick results they are more sensitive than the culture methods and they also tell about the drug resistance that's why the cbnet has become now the investigation of choice for diagnosis of the mycobacterium tuberculosis or the pulmonary tuberculosis so um, they give us a scope of early detection and uh, they are all they can also be used for the detection of the extra pulmonary tuberculosis like tuberculosis in the uh, vertebrae or tuberculosis in the lymph nodes that cases can also be diagnosed with the help of the cbnet now based on that cbnet there has been development of true net which is uh, called as cheap based net and this has this procedure has been developed in india why we need to develop this uh, true net so we need to develop this true net technique because we have a very much high load of tuberculosis cases in india and for that we have to detect that uh, those cases of the pulmonary tuberculosis as early as possible so uh, so so the true nets were developed which can be used in the primary health centers which, which are the lower facility of the lowest facility of delivering the health services to the people so th since they can be easy uh, uh, they can be used in the phcs and can uh, detect accurately the pulmonary tuberculosis that's why they need to be i mean since there was 
मोर केसेस ऑफ द ट्यूबरकुलसिस इन द कंट्री एंड एंड देर वॉज नीड टू डिटेक्ट द केसेस एज अर्ली एज पॉसिबल दैट्स वाई दिस ट्रू नेट वॉज डेवलप्ड सो दैट द केसेस कैन बी डिटेक्ट एट द पी एच सी लेवल ऑल्सो सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द डायग्नोसिस ऑफ द माइक्रोबैक्टीरिया ऑफ ट्यूबरकुलसिस नाउ समाइम्स दे आस्क द एलगोरिदम फॉर डायग्नोसिस ऑफ पलमोनी ट्यूबरकुलसिस सो इन दैट केस यू हैव टू मेक दिस होल चार्ट इन दैट केस यू हैव टू मेक दिस होल चार्ट दैट इज द एलगोरिदम फॉर डायग्नोसिस ऑफ द एलगोरिदम फॉर डायग्नोसिस ऑफ पलमोनी ट्यूबरकुलसिस सो दिस इज वेरी सिंपल वेरी सिंपल लाइक इफ अ पेशेंट विथ टी बी सस्पिशन If a patient with TB suspicion comes, then you have to give the sputum smear. You have to do the uh, sputum smear checking. And you have to do the chest X-ray, and you have to do the chest X-ray. Then we have to combinedly see the results of the two uh, investigations. So we can get three conditions: either the smear is positive. irrespective of the chest x-ray a smear is negative with the chest x-ray suggestive of tb or a smear is negative chest x-ray is negative and but symptoms are present so these three conditions may occur there now if the smear is positive if the smear is positive irrespective of the chest x-ray then we can directly say that this is a case of micro microbiologically confirmed tb but if smear is negative but chest x ray is suggestive of tb or the smear is negative chest x ray is negative and symptoms are positive then you have to go for cb net then you have to go for cb net and perform the cb net otherwise if there is extra pulmonary tuberculosis or pediatric pulmonary tuberculosis then you can directly go for cb net and in cb net if mycobacterium tuberculosis is detected or not detected if detected if detected then again this is a microbiologically confirmed tb and if not detected but there is clinically very high suspicion if there is clinically very high suspicion then you can say it as a clinically diagnosed tb if the clinical suspicion is not there then consider some other diagnosis because it cannot be the tb so this is how this is how you diagnose the this is the algorithm for diagnosis of the pulmonary tuberculosis the first the tb sus the tb suspected patient comes first the tb suspected patients uh first the tb suspected patient comes to you then you send him for sputum smear and chest x ray investigation this two investigation then you combinedly see the results of this sputum smear and the chest x ray investigation like whether what is the in, uh, result of this uh, smear sputum smear examination and the chest x ray so if there is sputum smear positive whatever may be the chest x ray whether they whether it is telling about tuberculosis or not Uh, irrespective of the chest x ray results if the smear has come out to be positive then directly you can say it as a microbiologically confirmed case of tuberculosis but if the smear is negative and chest x ray is suggestive of tb or if the smear is negative and the chest x ray is negative but the symptoms are present then go for the cb net go for the cb net and in cb net if mycobacterium tuberculosis is detected then you can say it as a microbiologically confirmed tb if mycobacterium tuberculosis are not detected then if there is clinically high suspicion then whether if if the clinically high suspicion is yes uh, if the answer to the question that whether it is a clinically high suspicion then you can clinically diagnose it as tb if there is no clinically high suspicion then consider some other diagnosis so this is the whole algorithm for diagnosis of tb this is all about the tuberculosis